Uh, you've got to be pleased that JK Rowling, uh, she leads with her chin. She believes there's only two genders because she's sane. Um, and uh, she leads with her chin and says, please arrest me. And Scottish police have turned around and said, no, 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 we're not arresting you. Say what you want on the internet. They're crazy. Scots have loved the, lost their ever-loving minds. Remember Braveheart? William Wallace? <laughs> You know, you can take our lives, but you'll never take our freedom. Wait, now we've switched to, if you insult me, I could have you arrested. If you hurt my feelings, you might go to jail for seven years on a hate crime. I don't, mm. my feelings, it sticks and stones. Wait, what? No, they do hurt. Um, they've changed the hate laws in Scotland now to say, they've expanded them basically, and say that if you say something that's offensive or insulting, about a transgender person, among others, you could go to jail for seven years if it's considered stirring up hate. If a reasonable person could say you stirred up hate with that remark. And when specifically asked, could this include something like, quote, misgendering, which is a misnomer because it's actually correct gendering of somebody, refusing to call a man a she? She didn't rule it out. She's like, oh, it'd be up to the police. So now people like J.K. Rowling, who do speak truth and sense on gender, and she lives in Scotland, could be arrested for a Twitter thread, for a, a, a conversation like you and I have every week. And J.K. Rowling, being a billionaire and one of the most successful people on earth, has said, bring it on. She's not in Scotland at the moment. She's traveling. But she says, if I go home and saying what's true gets me arrested, then let's go. And I don't know how that shakes out for her, because in Scotland, they don't have the First Amendment. They don't have... The, the Bill of Rights that like we have attached to our Constitution here in America, which I know would protect me. I have every belief and faith that it would protect me, but I don't know over there. And this is a place, I looked it up uh, in, in Scotland, where it has the worst number of drug deaths in Europe by a lot. In some parts of Scotland, like Glasgow's East End, uh, the male life ex inspects expectancy is lower than in Mongolia. Wow. So I think they have bigger issues to worry about than when so, whether somebody was, quote, offended or insulted by J.K. Rowling's or anybody else's views on gender. I think what also pisses me off about this type of law and, and in part this conversation, and I'm going a little bit deeper uh, today and certainly razor blades, still a highlight from last week. I'm still laughing. Now we've got the Lady of a Thousand Voices with Scotland as well. I'm liking this here. I'm liking this this new dimension, the voice actor uh, that is uh, Megan Kelly coming up uh, soon in uh, in a show, I think, with uh, written by Adam Carolla. But um, yeah. what I hate about this is that you know from your high school legal studies class or whatever it was called, all the way through to you reporting at something like the Supreme Court. There is a difference in the law between whether you've done something or whether you intended to do the something. And the intention of to do the something is what ends up with the longer penalties. All of this sort of feelings related stuff is that somebody gets to punish you for what they imagine to be your motivation. And that's what always sends me a little bit nutty, going, OK, we, you can have a go at me about what I say, but you don't get to tell me what I meant when I said it. And, and this one's judged by what the listener is feeling. Oh, like, I feel insulted by what you said at the dinner table. And I feel you stirred up hate amongst the four people sitting here. Mm. And therefore... I'm going to call the authorities and it will be up to some woke Scottish policeman to decide whether you remain a free person. How did the Scots vote for this? It, it came down, I think it was 82 to 32. So it wasn't close in favor of changing the law in this way. That dopey minister said it was unanimous, which it wasn't. Hmm. But the point is, they have bigger fish to fry. They have a lot bigger problems over there in Scotland to worry about than this. Um, apparently, the original genesis of this was a, a fear of people saying insulting things about Muslims. Okay, because I guess that's a real problem that they need to crack down on. So you're not allowed to offer, what, insulting thoughts about radical Islam now? And you definitely can't offer insulting thoughts about men who want to play in women's sports or men who are raping women in the prisons or 280-pound men who are six foot six who want to play in your daughter's field hockey team. Because what's important is his feeling, not the safety and well-being of your kid. And by the way, uh, women are not considered a, a special protected class under the new legislation. Uh, but so, so women who 
91% of all sexual violence is committed against women, okay? 91%. Those are the ones who are gonna get harmed by the men in the women's prisons and women's locker rooms and women's bathrooms. That's why we created women's spaces to begin with, the fear of an actuality of sexual assault by men against women. And so now we just need to shut our mouths if we're over in Scotland dealing with this because their feelings are more important than our safety. It's insane. Last one, Lizzo, um, who, yes, can play the flute while dancing in plus-size spandex. Um, she is accused by people who used to dance with her of being a bully, but now she's clearly proving herself to be a sook. She says after people had a crack at her after her latest performance that that's it, I quit, I'm out of music. Oh, but surprise, surprise, the quitting hasn't even lasted a week, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh. So here's what drives me crazy about this. So Lizzo posts this snotty little Instagram bit the other night. She had just finished performing for three presidents, one former, two, or two former, one current. So that's at Radio City Mu Music Hall. I mean, the elite of the elite, not good enough. She can't handle any negative comments online after such a thing. Meanwhile, you got political lady. Nobody told you how to show up at a political event to, to perform. When you do that, you put a toe in that arena, you're going to get it, that, no matter who you are. So she comes out and she says, oh, I'm, I'm very, I, I'm getting tired of being dragged on the internet. I didn't sign up for this. I quit. As you point out, within days, she's like, oh, never mind. I, didn't, I don't quit. I want all my money. But this is, think about the sense of entitlement. Okay, Paul, she's, she's won Emmys. She's won Grammys. She's had albums go double platinum, quadruple platinum, seven times platinum. She is, she's got a movie career now. She's on a reality TV series. She's got a whole line of clothing. They're making her into a fashion icon. She's won awards. She headlines every fabric. show. The, a lot, lot. It's and, a lot of fabric. It's still not good enough. She can receive only praise, only positivity, or she's the victim. Mm. She posted a video showing off her $26 million mansion with no food. Oh, mm. boo effing who? It's just one of her many homes in which she gets to live. She's definitely worth hundreds of millions of dollars at this point, and she still wants us to feel sorry for her. Why again? because some people said some unflattering things about her on the internet. I'm not sad for you. I don't feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for me because I've had to listen to this nonsense. <laughs> Quit whining, grow up, put on your very, very big girl pants and take it like a woman. <laughs> And as a plus-size model myself, I endorse the ladies' comments 100%. Thank you, Megan. We love you, darling. We'll see you again next week. Bye.